Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, help us to see precisely this, that it is better to have our lives given over to you so that it is no longer our own, because you are the best, you are the greatest. Help us to see this in the scriptures tonight. Amen. Man, have you had a busy Sunday? Have you? Or has it been relaxing? Maybe some of you have had a busy Sunday. I mean, isn't it so busy, not just Sundays, but every day? It's sort of from the moment you wake up, you know, it's an endless stream of tasks and responsibilities. It's sort of, when you wake up, you're going to make breakfast, and then, uh, you know, my wife's going to pack some lunches, if she hasn't done that the night before, get the kids off to school on the bike, uh, like a lunatic is what I'm doing. Uh, it's a mad dash maybe for you to work, meetings, deadlines, you know, emails, outside work. It's a whole combination of, like, maintaining relationships and a, and a mountain of, like, chores around the house. It's like it's cooking, it's meal planning, it's cleaning, you got to go to the shop, get the stuff, laundry's piling up, uh, dishes in the sink, uh, floors that need vacuuming. Goodness me. We try and squeeze in some exercise because you don't want to, you know, you want to live a bit longer if you can. You want to have a healthy life, so you try and do that. Maybe a quick run, a trip to the gym, uh, something in the garage, maintain your health. Um, then after you've been to the shop, you think, oh, you know, I've got to spend some quality time with the family. Um, and so maybe over dinner, a bedtime story, you open the Bible at dinner, something like that. Uh, let's not forget that throughout all of this, this little device here is pinging. Um, all sorts of social relationships, some of which you do not want to keep. Um, and all of that is happening with bills to pay and appointments to keep. <laughs> is it not easy to let time with Jesus in his word be squeezed out in the busyness of life? It is, isn't it? <laughs> Because if you say no, I'm going to feel really sad about my own life right now. We find ourselves, like one of the women in our passage, Martha, distracted by all the preparations that have to be made, and forgetting that sometimes the most important thing and the simplest thing we can do is to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen and obey him. Now, this is where we've been. We've been in the Gospel of Luke, and particularly earlier in chapter 10, if you cast your eye down to your Bible, you see that we've just had the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, this is really interesting because in the parable of the Good Samaritan, there is someone saying something to Jesus. Jesus says, hey, can you summarize what you understand from the law, from the books of the Bible? And he says, well, love the Lord your God, and then love your neighbor. And he says, who is my neighbor? He's trying to justify himself, and then Jesus gives a whole parable of the Good Samaritan to explain who the neighbor is. And then we're kind of left with the question, that's how you love your neighbor, okay, and Jesus has got to be the Good Samaritan that rescues us, because we're half dead on the road. But what about loving God? What does that look like? Mary and Martha, this narrative, what is it like to love God to sit at the feet of Jesus? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight, because there's a whole host of things here that hopefully will encourage me and challenge me and you. And the first way that you do this is you don't get distracted, okay? You don't get distracted. Let's read that passage again from verse 38 of Luke 10. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. It kind of makes you think that she was the older sister like in charge of the home some way, because she's the one that chooses to host Jesus. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him, to Jesus, and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister's left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Now, I'll, I want to tell you something that connects with this passage, um, and it's this. I like buffets okay if you know this about me i like buffets uh, five or six years ago when i first started at this church it was not visible now if i turn profile it will be a bit more visible um but a a as we think about this now imagine oh i've forgotten to put my pictures in there oh there it is look there we go do you know what cut of meat that is brother knows Picanha, picanha, only the most expensive cut. I just looked it up today, a kilo of it is nearly 50 quid. Anyway, I like buffets. If 
on a buffet. I can choose meat or something else. I will choose, obviously. Would you choose anything else? We will pray for you. That's fine. <laughs> Come and chat to me later on. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that makes me think. Um, there's a whole theme of food in this passage because there is a sister, Martha, preparing lots of food. She thinks this is the most important thing that you need to do, preparing food, tidying the house. And it seems to me that Martha, Mary has identified that cleaning the house and doing all the stuff is a side dish. It's the vegetables. It's the vinaigrette, as we call it in Portuguese. Mary has said, I want the picanha. I want the T-bone steak, okay? And what is that? It's Jesus. Being with him. When Jesus is on offer, you don't choose anything else because to choose anything else would be to be distracted. That's why our two points this evening are, um, don't be distracted and choose what is best. So let's talk about distraction, because distraction is when we allow anything to take away our attention from what should be number one, okay? It's like Martha's so distracted by other things, by the vegetables. I'm not even saying the vegetables in the main area. I'm saying the vegetables in the little appetizer area. They won't even fill you up. And she is just lost in that little table. Now, in other words... She is distracted by what is good instead of what is best. Let's look at these in in, in a little bit more detail. Because that happens, isn't it? We can be distracted by good things that aren't the best, can't we? Are you an indecisive person? Maybe some of you might be indecisive. Are you perhaps someone who struggles with FOMO? The fear of missing out? You know, whatever you're doing, you're thinking... I could be doing this instead. It would be more fun, you know? Perhaps you think, I could be doing something so much more fun than listening to Tiago tonight, opening this Bible to us. Uh, Maybe you're someone who struggles with living with contentment, being happy with what you have and who you are. Now, often in those situations, what we need is a change of mindset, isn't it? Like, for example, if you're an indecisive person, well, it seems that choice A, B, C, and D are just as good, and you can't make a decision. But if you have a change of mindset and someone comes in and says, hey, A, B, C, or D, let me show you this one is best. It's a cut up of the rest. All of a sudden, the shoulders slump and you know you've made the right decision. Now, don't get me wrong. Martha isn't doing anything bad. It's not bad to try and serve the Lord Jesus. As a matter of fact, what's interesting is Jesus doesn't shoot her down. She's a lovely useful person that you want to have around. She is so loving and caring that even before Jesus turned up, she was already loving him, wasn't she? Because she was preparing the home, thinking of him and of his arrival. So I'm not going to say anything, uh, you know, crazy bad about Martha. But the point of serving Jesus is that you love Jesus, right? Right? And you want more of Jesus. So that when Jesus is there, you'd rather have him. And when she gets upset that Mary's not getting the picture, it's because her mind is in, we need to eat. We need to provide a place for Jesus. And I can just imagine that that day, Mary was just going, what do you mean we need to eat? I'm going to go and listen to Jesus because if he wants us to eat, he can just do this. And 5,000 people are fed fed with some bread and some fish. So Jesus doesn't need anything I can give. I want more of him. So distraction can do that for us. It can help us miss the point that life is meant to be. God has created us to enjoy Jesus, to listen to him. When we get distracted from that, here's what's going to happen. We get distracted by the side dishes of life, and it causes us what it caused in Martha. Frustration. Can you see that? Can you hear that frustration in verse 40? Look at it. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care? 
that my sisters left me to do the work by myself. Kind of like when the disciples were frustrated in the middle of a storm and Jesus was sleeping and they shake Jesus up, you can imagine. And they say, Jesus, don't you care about us? We're going to die. Don't you care? Frustration. They've been distracted from the truth that we have Jesus. What do you need that you don't have if you have Jesus? It causes this distraction, a lot of anxiety and worry. Another translation puts what's in verse 41 as fussing and fretting. Look, Jesus is so gentle, so kind with Martha. Look at verse 41. He says, Martha, Martha. I mean, if the scripture could convey a sense of tenderness, a sense of love and understanding where Martha's coming from, I think that repetition of her name does it. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset or fussing and fretting in some translations about many things. I, I think of how if most of life, if only you and I, instead of fussing and fretting about things, stopped and listened to Jesus, would that not bring peace to our hearts? The Jesus that says, come to me, all you who are weary and you've got heavy burdens, I'll give you rest. If only we listened to him. If only we listened to him with our guilt over our sins, over the wrong things that we've done instead of being consumed by it. If only we listened to him and brought it to him instead of being bitter over what has been done to us. Now, of course, each situation is a different situation. And Jesus knows how to address where we're at. But my point is this. When we are distracted from looking at what Jesus says and who he is and enjoying him, a lot of worry and anxiety will easily take over. Now, here, here's how I see what's going on, right? Because I couldn't say, there's Jesus right there between the Watkins and the Ambroses. And, and you better spend time with him instead. Of, I can't say that, right? So that means we've got to apply and understand this passage in a different way because Jesus isn't physically in flesh and blood here. Now, here's, here's where I'm going with this. And you, you tell me if you see it in the scriptures as I see it, okay? Come and talk to me. The problem with what Martha was doing is she had the choice of doing stuff for Jesus or getting distracted by doing stuff for Jesus or listening to Jesus and letting that guide all the stuff that she did. We have the same choice today. We have the same choice today. God has given to you not an appointment at 11 o'clock tomorrow where Jesus will be in your home and you better listen to him. But instead, he's given you God's means of grace and strength. And they are things like engaging with the word of God, reading it alone, together with a brother or sister, listening to it being preached, coming to the midweek meeting and then praying through what the word says, engaging in fellowship. Attending the church services where you get to enjoy God together in song and with your attention here and through an interview or you see God's name be glorified. All of those are God's means of grace. But I would venture saying this. If you are Martha, you're too busy for it. You're too busy for it. Well, you don't know my work. My work is crazy. I could never make meeting A, B, C. I could never spend time in the Bible. My life is just too busy. I'm going to say that if God who created the entire universe has said, come to me in the word, he's going to help you make time to depend on him. And he's going to be kind about it. He's not going to say, come on, dude, get it ready. He's going to say, Martha, Martha, let me show you a better way. So don't be distracted, but choose what is best. Now, I believe it's our choice. Here's a choice that was made. Um, if the computer sound is on, I'm just going to play a little clip real quick. Listen to it. Either have $10,000 cash or, wait a minute, this two out-of-the-box Oreo cookies. Huh? Are you sure? That's $10,000 cash. You want the Oreo cookies? Are you sure? Yes. There you go. Okay. Go ahead. And it, 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 
It's a choice well made, isn't it? <laughs> it is. uh, somebody needs to get that boy and just sort of talk about long-term, long-term plans. Okay, put a financial spreadsheet. Look, these Oreos are not going to last very long, but $10,000, lots of Oreos you can buy. And it's all sorts of things. Look, it even accounts for inflation, how many Oreos you can buy with $10,000. I really want to do the same test with my children. <laughs> um, but but you, you just imagine here, Jesus is saying, okay, there's something about a choice here. Can you see that? Look at it again in verse 41. You worried about many things. Verse 42, one thing is necessary, right? As the SV says, one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen, she's chosen it, what is better. And what she's chosen won't be taken away from her. There's an element of you being able to use your brain that the Lord Jesus has given you. And perhaps to be challenged even here this evening about things that are distracting you and making you say that you don't have time to spend with Jesus, that you don't have time to spend with Jesus with his people maybe, that you don't have time to pray and enjoy his presence. But Mary has chosen. We can choose. This is very challenging because sometimes things just happen to us. It's like, say, the retired people of this church, right? Some people come in and it's like they will fill their calendar, okay? So like retired people, they're in charge of their lives, and then all of a sudden, they're not, <laughs> okay? Because they have grandchildren to look after, great-grandchildren, they have like all sorts of things they're doing for neighbors or for the whatever. All of a sudden, life happens to us, and unless we choose, we will just be distracted, and we won't even see that we're missing out on what is best. Sometimes you might be so busy serving the Lord. Man, you're doing every ministry. You're at the winter warmer. You're at the youth group. You're doing every sort of, you know, you're counseling your neighbor. It's all sorts of things are happening. And perhaps you never stop to think, who am I doing this for? Am I doing this for the Lord Jesus? Because I've been sitting, sitting at his feet, listening to him, and I want to live my life in light of that. Or is it just because I just do a bunch of stuff? That's quite challenging. It's not about not doing what is good. It's not about, I wish it was, me never doing the dishes. I wish it was about that. In, sorry, love, I have to read the Bible. Um, darling, you said you would do this slow cook today because I've got to... Uh, babe, I'm sorry. I need to memorize this verse. I have tried that. It has not worked. My wife knows the Bible. She knows the Bible. She went to Bible college with me. I can't, you know, dissuade her. But it's easy, isn't it, for many of us to just say, look, you can imagine Martha walking around before she gets this frustration out onto Jesus. And she's going, if I don't do this job, it will not get done and people will suffer because I've not done it. I've shirked the responsibility. Can you identify with that? I know some of you incredibly organized people that make life happen. You can identify with that. But what if the Lord Jesus, when he says, spend time with me, that means that he has made you not to be the savior of the world because he is. And therefore, if you can't save the world and do every bit of, and you can't go around with the toothbrush cleaning around the toilet, Perhaps that is okay if it's a choice between spending some time with Jesus and doing that little extra job that actually will prevent you from having spent time with Jesus for the last three days. Think about it. But choosing what is best. What are we talking about when we say what is best? Look at this. I love this. Psalm 27. Uh, David says this. I only want one thing. That's all I want. I only want, want to seek this one thing. Here's what, here's what it is. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze, to look intently, to stare at the beauty of the Lord. The ESV translation has, um, Mary has chosen the good portion. The good portion. Here's why I like that translation. This is the good portion. 
It's not because Martha and Mary could have looked at Jesus' beauty. Well, he probably wasn't very handsome because Isaiah says there wasn't anything to make us look at him and go, wow, you know. It was because his character is so beautiful. He is so merciful, forgiving, kind, loving, just, that we can't but stare at his character in the Bible. That's why in Deuteronomy, the Lord has inspired Moses to write, you can't just live on bread. Hey, Martha, you're preparing lots of food and stuff for Jesus. Mary's like, I'm going to feed on Jesus. You get the metaphor? I'm going to feed on every word that he says, so I'm spiritually nourished. What happens is, Mary has chosen to understand something that was Maybe a little bit clearer if you read the Old Testament. You remember the Levites? They were the tribes of Israel, right? The Levites didn't have, like the other tribes, just a bit of land allocated from one tribe, the tribe of Levi. Instead, they were scattered around amongst the other tribes because the Lord is their inheritance. The Lord is their good portion. Now get this. Jesus says in in, in that verse that we've just read, look, Few things are needed, indeed only one. Whereas the SV says, only one thing is necessary. And he's going to explain why. Why that is better. If it's necessary, that means you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision about Jesus. Who is Jesus? What do you think? Do you have some big questions for him? Do you trust him? Is he your rescuer? It's necessary. You've got to make a decision. But number two, she has to figure out that what is better is better because it can't be taken away. It can't be taken away. Now, you're going to be tempted, aren't you? You're going, to, you're going to be tempted to put your identity, who you are, in your work. Maybe you're really good at what you do, and people look up to you because you're good at what you do. And you have a skill set that you've built that people want to pay to see in action. How easy is it for us to get ME, to get sick some other way, and not be able to do it again. We will have chosen to put our identity in what can be taken away. Maybe it's in, you have just such fantastic personality. I mean, if you're a teenager here, maybe you are just a popular teenager everybody wants to be friends with because you are just really good at talking to everybody. Okay, some of you are looking embarrassed right now because you know that's you and everybody wants to be around you and it's fantastic. Can that change? Friendships are fickle. People change their minds like that. Hopefully the point that you get is if Martha had put her identity in doing a bunch of stuff. I'm a doer. I'm busy. One day she might not be able to do it. Perhaps she ages and her joints ache. But if, like Mary, she puts her identity in, just give me Jesus. I want to learn from him and love him. I want to be with him. I want to share him with others. Do you know what she's done there? She has chosen heaven. That's what makes heaven heaven, isn't it? Jesus being there. It's not because you live forever. It's not because everything is perfect in the new heavens and new earth. All of that would be boring and hellish if it wasn't for Jesus is there. And I get him. So my challenge for us this evening is what have our priorities been? Have we been choosing what is best to enjoy Jesus? Have we been letting other things squeeze out time with Jesus and time with his people? If so, Martha, Martha, listen, listen. He kindly wants to redirect our attention to him. Now, as we do this, let me just tell you one more thing, right? If you know me, you know I am strange in some ways. Sometimes I'm visibly strange. All the youth are going, absolutely, that's right. So, you know, there's the, there's the physical strangeness of dipping everything in my coffee. Uh, for example, toast with yogurt, Cheerios dipped in the coffee. Yes, I know that's strange. Fine, my identity is in Jesus. He loves me. I can eat toast, yogurt, Cheerios, and coffee. It's fine. But there's another kind of strangeness, okay? 
hopefully the same strangeness that you share and that other people who don't know Jesus and trust in Jesus will think is strange too. Have you ever had somebody think it's strange that you give so much of your money to like some organization that just wants children to hear about Jesus? That's weird, isn't it? That's weird. Or maybe that you give of your time to people who just are disgusted by you and you want to treat them nicely and kindly and yet you never get anything back. That is strange, isn't it? That in your life you choose not what is good but what is best and people can see that you choose to listen, to follow, to love, to be changed by Jesus. If that's you tonight, brother, sister, let's carry on. If that's not you, the warning is, is what you trust, what you live for, what gets you, you know, what gets you up in the morning, what gets you out of the house, is it something that can be taken away? Or is it what is better and cannot be taken away? The Lord Jesus cannot be taken away, not by death itself, because death only brings me close to him forever. Let me pray that that is your hope this evening. Let's bow our heads and pray now. Lord Jesus, sometimes it's really hard to see when life is busy, when the kids are screaming, when the neighbors are complaining, when the bills come in, when the body aches, when we have sleepless nights. It can be really difficult to look beyond simple busyness and actually look to you and know that if we have you, if we spend time with you, our biggest problem has been solved. The problem of sin, the problem of separation from God, the problem of how do we enjoy you forever. Please help us to be like Mary. The Mary that at the same time washed your feet with her hair. She was a woman of action. But help our service to you to be inspired by our enjoyment of you. Because you are a gracious and loving God and we worship you. Help us even now as we celebrate communion, your sacrifice that even enabled us to be able to know your love. Help us to do that as we enjoy you together. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen.